All right, so we know it. The markets are down bad. NFTs are in a dumpster fire. We're probably all applying for McDonald's. So with all that happening and not a lot of great new projects coming out, or at least ones that we want to spend money on, I figured what better video to do than to make our own NFT tier list. And for this list, I've compiled about 85 of the top 100 most volume traded collections. So there shall be no biases here. There shall be no complaints in the comments. If your bags don't get pumped or if I dump your bags in this video, I'm not sorry because it's not my duty to pump your bags for you. I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. So these NFT collections are objectively the most popular ones that have ever come out. And that's purely based on their trading volume, meaning that some of these collections have either the highest market cap or have the most activity. So if I missed out on your project in this video, I'm so sorry, not really though. Leave me a comment down below and maybe I'll do another one that includes even more projects. Now, before we dive in here real quick, you should know that I don't know everything about all these projects, right? There's 85 projects I'm going to rank here. There is no way I could possibly know the ins and outs of each one. In fact, more than half of them, I haven't even been involved with that much, if anything at all. So keep that in mind. And with that being said, if you are in any of these projects and I am inaccurate on what I think about them, please let me know why in the comments below so that we can all learn from this video and figure out which of these projects maybe we should look more into. First up, we got Oni Force. And if you haven't been around that long, you probably won't even know what this project is, but this project did really well in the beginning. It was a product that came out in August of last year, 2021, when I first got involved in the NFT space. And it went as high as a nine Ethereum floor. But as you can see right here, it is no longer at a nine Ethereum floor. In fact, it's struggled to stay above half an ETH for a long time. I will say that this is a tough one to rate against these other ones because it's been around a lot longer. And what you're going to see is a lot of these other projects, as I'll rank them, will not make it very far either. But unfortunately, Oni Force, we already know, has not made it. And for that reason, I'm putting it in the not going to make it section. I should also mention that my scale has blue chips. We're going to make it, which is projects I think will succeed at some point or are already succeeding to some degree. Solid projects. Some where there's a lot of hopium still, but who knows if they'll make it to the bear market or not. The not gonna make it section, which is ones that have either already not made it in my eyes or are soon going to be there. And then the 98%, which if you haven't heard, 98% of NFT products are probably going to zero. So that's where most of these products will end up. Next up, we got three landers. I currently own two of these. I recently sold one of them at a very fat loss. I love the story aspect. I think the art is really good. I think the community is strong. This is a good team but I question whether or not the value is going to help it make it through the bear market. I think there's hope for this project, but I don't think it's as good as I once did. We'll see where this one comes out at the end of the bear market. Then we have the 888 Inner Circle, and this is made by a influencer in the space that at one point was doing super, super well. Might have even been we we're going to make it, but at this point, I have to put it in not going to make it. It is at a 0.18 floor roughly right now. I have no idea what the inside of this product is like, but based on the floor price alone, it's safe to say that it's not doing anything spectacular or special at the moment. Next up, we have the Adidas Into the Metaverse project. This one has done well. It's held the 1E floor for quite a while now. I believe that the holders of this project finally got their IRL, their physical exclusive product, which is the jumpsuit, sweatpants, and a beanie, I believe. This one's definitely a solid project. I don't even want to say it's going to make it yet because it's too early to tell, truthfully. If a product hasn't been around more than six months, it's very hard to say whether or not they're going to make it. It's been six months. We're talking about a year or several year project brands here like Adidas that needs to stand the test of time to even be considered a we're going to make it. Next up, we have Alien Friends. And to be honest with you, Alien Friends reminds me a lot of Freelanders. And that's why we're going to put it in there as hope. It's still holding a decent floor. It's been much higher, just like Freelanders has up around a two ETH floor at one point. They've had some airdrop companions come out. They have some cool ideas in the way that they put those out. The Alien Friends evolution was a cool concept, but... Truthfully, this one, again, I'm not sure what the value is long term for holders right now. I don't know what the outstanding or unique utility is. My brother has a couple of these and I don't feel like the sentiment is very strong for Alien Friends currently. Next up, we have the Arcade Inc. Land. Now, I was able to dump these at a 1.1 ETH floor as soon as Pranksy was buying them. I was really worried about the fact that I just dumped my bags on Pranksy, who it's Pranksy. This guy knows what he's doing. Since then, the floor has only come down. But with other deeds actually putting out their load test today and their first trip coming out next week, this is going to be an aftersight. 
I think there's still hope here because of the fact that they worked on the board AB Yacht Club game, but I'm not sure how this is going to stand up against other metaverse platforms like Meta or Yuga Labs or pretty much anything else. Axie has been one of the longest standing projects on this list, and it's obviously had a huge decline from its peak. We're now seeing what things look like in the bear. Everything looked great in the bull, but how does it look now? This one's tough to say whether it's going to be a not going to make it, which I think is obvious at this point, but it also might be the 98%. And to be honest with you, because it's so early in NFTs, this is one of the staple games that will be remembered as one of the ones that helped pave the path for play to earn. But I'm going to be honest with you, this one, I just don't see making it past another year. It might still be around. People might still play it. You can still earn from it, I'm sure. But in terms of legitimacy and competing with other play to earn games coming out, this one paved the road, but it's not the final destination. Next up, we have Azuki. And this is a fun topic because people get really heated about Azuki. After the FUD came out with Zagabond about him rugging other projects, Azuki's held stable around a 10 to 12 ETH floor. But I just don't know if that FUD is going to be able to allow them to go on to be the big brand that they once had potential to be. For that reason, I'm going to put them in solid right now. I do think they're going to make it. I do think they're going to be a brand for the future. They have a ton of money. They have a really strong community of people that's still there. I know a lot of people that are still holding all through thick and thin. It's just hard to say whether or not they're going to really become something big like they once could have. Next up, we have Bored Ape Kennel Club. And I think we have to put this one and we're going to make it solely because it has been around that long. It's been around, I believe, at least eight months, maybe more like 10 months. I'm not sure where it came out after Bored Apes. The only thing I don't love about this project is that they've never really done anything special for the Bored Ape Kennel Club holders. It's always just been a companion NFT that's there. You got more ape token if you held one of these in conjunction with another ape, but it's just not done anything special. You have to put it and we're going to make it. It's going to ride with the pack. And speaking of Bored Ape Yacht Club, I think I'd be pretty dumb at this point to not put it as a blue chip. I've watched other YouTubers put Bored Apes not in the top tier, you have to ask yourself, how could you not put it number one? Or at least in that top row. Maybe it's not number one, but it's got to be in the top row. And there's there's several reasons why. It's the highest floor. It's held the highest floor for a long time. It's been around for a year, which almost no other NFT project on this list has. They have millions of dollars of funding. They have backing from major companies like FTX and major Web2 brands. If these guys don't make it, none of these products will probably make it. That's the truth. I mean, aside from maybe these pre-established brands like Adidas or a Nike, some other up and coming one that we just don't know about yet. It's hard to say that Bored Ape is not a blue chip at this point. It is the blue chip. So whether you buy into the FUD about the whole propaganda or not, this is a bona fide blue chip. It stood through that FUD, Stonewall didn't drop below 80 ETH at any point, And it's just, it's holding its own. Even though the US dollar value is not there, the floor on this has been as solid as ever. Next up, we have Beans, which is the companion secondary collection for Azuki. I have to put Beans right next to Azuki because I think if Azuki goes well, Beans should follow suit. Obviously, it's not performing as well in comparison to Mutant Apes and Bored Apes. At some point, they will put these more forward in the brand and make them more relevant or add a specific utility to this collection. I still hold two beans. I made a huge mistake by not selling them at six ETH because they're now worth about one ETH each. Tough. But I do think that this one's going to go wherever Azuki does. So there's definitely still potential here. Bears Deluxe. Now, I don't know very much at all about this product, to be honest with you. I heard about this a while ago. It's been around a lot longer than some of these products has. Uh, the floor price is decent, at least. I don't know what that really says about the overall project or the initiative or where it could go. But to be honest with you, I don't hear it talked about at all anymore. In fact, many of you watching this, if you're new, are not going to even know what this is. So for that reason, I'm going to say that they're at some point not going to make it. Next up, I believe this is Boss Beauties, and this is another one that I'm not super familiar with. Uh, it's done pretty well from what I've seen so far. And again, it's in the same thing as some of these other ones right here. I would say it's between not going to make it and there's hope. I think there's probably more hope for this project because I've still seen the name floating around. I've still seen the initiative. I think female-led projects or female-centric projects have a lot of growth still to come because most of the space is dominated by a male presence. And I think that's going to change over time. So this one could be one of that historical value NFTs that really sets a precedent for the female and female oriented NFT collections. Here we got Clone X. This one, I got to say, is borderline blue chip. I, I don't want to put it in blue chip status yet because it's still floating around a 10 ETH. It, it did get as high as 20 ETH, but I still want to see a bit more from what Nike has planned with this collection before I can really consider a blue chip. I will say that in terms of the market and price action, 
I would probably clarify it as a blue chip because this product has been out for more than six months now, which in NFT world is enough time to be considered a blue chip, I suppose. I'm going to say this is we're going to make it at the moment, but it's definitely teetering on the top tier. And right after that, we have another tough one, Cool Cats. I'm going to put this one and we're going to make it as well. I think after seeing NFT NYC, this project really showed me something that I didn't see from it before. And that is a brand that everyone can get behind. Young kids all the way up to adults can relate to the Cool Cat and can participate in what the Cool Cat brand is all about. There's some other products here that I just can't see kids being super interested in or understanding or caring about. For example, example, Crypto Skulls is one that's just like, I don't think kids are going to be super interested in this. It's there for historic value. It's skulls. There's nothing really brandable or exciting or friendly or cute about it that kids might be interested in. Cool pets. Game seems to be a bit underwhelming overall. I think there's been a lot of buzz leading up to it. That's what the hype was all about and why it got to a 14 ETH floor at one point for cool cats, that is. But I still don't think that this is on the level of certain things like Adidas or Azuki. Certainly not on the level of Clonex or cool cats itself. If cool cats does as well ideally cool pets will follow suit i'm gonna put it in there's hope for now and say that if cool cats does well they can both shift up a gear right cool cats could go to blue chip and cool pets could go to solid but for right now with play to earn and games in nfts i still think there's a lot to be unfolded and cool pets isn't quite to the level i want to see it at yet Next up, we got Cool Man's Universe, and this is a product that's been around for a while. It's one that I know almost nothing about. I've heard about it here and there, and I've heard about the founders here and there. But truthfully, I don't know anything about this project. And for that reason, I'm going to put it in there's hope because who knows? Could be hopium, could be nothing. We'll see. We got Creature World up next, and this is just like Cool Man's Universe. Heard about it a long time ago. This is another one that I think is just like there's potential, but it's unlikely. And for that reason, I'm going to actually go and say it's not going to make it. After that, we got Creeps. And at one point, Creeps was at a 98th floor as well. The Lumi token, which is the token yield that it gets from playing this game or staking it, was at 6 cents or 60 cents, actually 60 cents. Yeah, it's now worth nothing. Creeps floor way down. People that are in Creeps are diehard Creeps fans. I'm not. This one's going to the toaster. Cryptodes, another one. This is Gremlin. It's a reputable artist. A lot of strongholders and a lot of the people that I know that were in this space from day one early on really believe in the art and are still holding their cryptodes. I think there's still hope for this project. I would not say it's a solid project anymore. It's definitely lost its height. There is no roadmap. There's no utility. It's purely an art project. It's purely a meme historical value. The only thing I will say for cryptodes is that it was featured in the other side metaverse trailer. And I do think that those six collections featured in the trailer, one of them is also Cool Cats. Those definitely have something in there still that hasn't been explored that could help the price of this at some point. Next up, we have Crypto Mori's, I believe is what this one is. Again, know very little about this, but to be honest with you, the fact that I don't hear about it very much, the fact that it's relatively new and hasn't had a strong standing in its time that it's been around, I'm going to say this one's not going to make it just because those are the odds right here. We got Crypto Bats by Ozzy Osbourne. I think overall this one was a pretty good product when it came out. But at the end of the day, it's more or less a cash grab long term. Don't see what's going to happen here. Not going to make it. Crypto Punks, whether you like them or not, they are a blue chip. They will always be a blue chip in my eyes because they are historically so relevant and so necessary for the rest of these collections especially as profile pictures, that they have to be a blue chip. They have stood the test of time as long as anyone, longer than anyone, multiple years. They still have a name in the space. There's still a status symbol shown off. Crypto Skulls, super historical, but I don't think it's got much more than that. I'm going to go not going to make it. This is Cyber Brokers, I believe. I've heard a lot of great stuff. I don't personally have any investment in Cyber Brokers. I don't know about the community very well. Truthfully, I'm not fully up to speed on what the product is aiming to do or does, but because I've heard so much about them, people constantly want to buy them even right now while things are down. The floor has held significantly well compared to a lot of these other projects. For that reason, I'm going to go ahead and put them in the solid tier. That's right now. We'll see where they fare over the next several months, and if that could... De that could deteriorate with time, but at the moment, I would say that they're a solid play. Cyberkongs. Hard to say. I haven't heard or seen a lot about Cyberkongs. They are still a staple. Some would consider them a blue chip. I might even consider them a blue chip. I can't quite justify putting it at blue chip anymore. I'm going to go and say it's in the we're going to make it. I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. It's been around, like I said. It's it's checked off a lot of the boxes. We'll put it just below blue chip for now. Dead fellows, another middle of the pack. It's it's a mid project. This is the definition of a mid project. It should go right here. Three landers, alien friends, dead fellows. The definition of mid projects. There's definitely hope. There's definitely value there. Next up, we have D Gen Tunes. Hopium, but 
who knows? A Solana project, this is D gods. This is probably the biggest Solana project in terms of floor price. I think the floor price right now is somewhere around 350 to 400 soul, which 12 to $16,000 right now, which if you compare that to Ethereum, that's a 12 to 16 ETH floor. So by those standards, this is a top tier project at the moment, but it's hard for me to get behind Solana projects because there's just so much shenanigans going on over there right now. Solana itself as a network has gone down a couple of times. It's been halted. That is not good at all for any chance. Chain. For those reasons, I have some issues, but I'm going to put it in solid for now. I don't think it's in the second tier of we're going to make it yet because it's just not had enough time to show me that it's going to make it. I've heard a lot of good things from people that I trust about the founders, about the team after NFT NYC, the Doge Pound. I want to hear some comments about how much I was wrong about the Doge Pound, at least at the moment. Doge Pound hit a 40 floor and has consistently come down over several months to where it's at now at 0.3 and it's seems to have found support here. I sold two of my three doges. I still have my PFP as doge. I've had the PFP as doge my entire time in the NFT space. Not sure many other people can say that. It doesn't feel like a status symbol anymore because it doesn't have that value. I'm going to say that there is still hope for this project if they can hone in on what the heck they want to do. They're trying to do too many things at once. And I've always said it's better to be great at one thing than decent at a bunch. Doodles. This is this is borderline blue chip at this point. The announcement about Pharrell and the Doodles 2 collection and just the way that they ran out their auction method was super cool. I really like how they did it. It went really well. They saved a ton of gas versus someone like Yuga Labs who just spent an absurd amount of gas for their mint and it was just a total mess. Doodles is really close between blue chip and we're going to make it. For right now, I'm going to put it and we're going to make it. Next up is Fluff World. I really put this product off my radar early on. I thought it was a pump and dump. It went nuclear when it launched. Then it came down quite a bit to about one ETH. It's now sitting around two to three ETH. These guys have innovated and I didn't even recognize it or give them the time of day because I was not able to identify it at the time. But looking back, I think these guys are a solid project. I think it's one that people don't really know about that much anymore. They don't get talked about too much. This is an earlier project. It's probably been out for eight or nine months now, maybe even 10 months. And this is one you should look into if you haven't heard about it before. Really cool project. Next up, we got the Full Send Meta Card here. This is the Nelk Boys, the Full Send podcast. Uh, this one, I, I don't know much about. It's an access token for the stuff that they do. They're well connected. They're smart people. They have a lot of good relationships in the space. So I can't imagine they would blow it and, and screw over all their people. But it's hard to say whether or not this one's going to be really appealing to the masses or just appealing to their fan base. It might just be their fan base, in which case I'd say that there's hope and there's definitely going to be some value there for people that love them. But outside of that, in the grand scheme of things, against all these other projects, probably not the best pick. Next up, we got Galactic Apes. Literally did not hear about this product until I found it on the OpenSea Top 100 in terms of trading volume. It's got a 0.02 floor. There's not much to say here. It's not going to make it. Goblin Town. Let's talk about Goblin Town. A lot of people think this is becoming a blue chip. A lot of people think this is going to be a product that stands the test of time. I personally believe this is born in a bear market time where people are just going full degen. It's so early that you have the true hardcore crazy flippers in the space right now. And that's why this project succeeded. I don't see this project going super far unless their founders really put something together that makes it a brand worth recognizing. Mm, I'm tough. It's tough between solid and there's hope. I'm going to go with solid for now, but I think this one's leaning towards there's hope. I really don't believe this is going to be a huge brand long term. Gutter Cats, another product I don't know much about, but given the fact that they have a name, people talk about them. The floor is solid. The market does not lie. I'm going to put this one in solid as well. Next up, we got Hate Beast. Oh boy, 80 floor at one point. I would say at one point it might have been that we we're going to make it. It felt like we were going to make it. And then it didn't feel so much like we were going to make it. And then the hype really died. And it's like, man, I hope this thing still pans out to be something. And then I was like, man, I, I haven't heard about Hape like at all. What are they doing? I don't know. I'm going to say that there's hope. They have a ton of money to work with. They have a seemingly strong community still. I mean, the, the floor price isn't totally garbage. There's definitely something to work with there. There's resources. It's just a matter of whether or not they do something with them. Next up, we got Hash Masks. This is a OG day one type project that people thought was going to be the real deal. There's probably still some hope left, but not much. It's, it's looking more like it's not going to make it in my eyes. Imaginary Ones, a newer project, has a lot of funding. They raised a ton of funds. I think the team behind this is really smart. They took their time with it. I've talked to them. I actually had one of their founders in my alpha group. I'm going to say that there's hope, 
There's definitely a lot more upside to this one. I'll actually put it first because there's way more upside here than there is downside at the moment. Imposters. This is a play to earn game, I believe. Elio Trades, an influencer who I respect. He's done well in the space. I think he knows his stuff. I think this is a good project. My concern is that play to earn is so far off from where I wanted it and thought it could be at this moment that I'm not sure that things like this, that games and play to earn like Axie Infinity really can survive these next few years of tough times to make it into the, the big leagues. These guys might have a chance because of their founder. And for that reason, I'm gonna say that, mm, I'm gonna say that there's hope. Again, this is another one that's up top. There's definitely more upside here than downside, but I just don't wanna say that it's a solid project yet because it's just way too new and it's in a space that is really in a tough spot in my eyes. Invisible Friends, great art, arguably one of the best artists in the space in my eyes, uh, definitely innovating in terms of the art style and what they bring to the game. I think this is a solid project. I'm excited to see how this one goes. I don't own any personally, but I do think that this one's got potential. Journey Club, my boy, Tony, my gosh, I loved Tony. The guy made $45 million on this drop I am so happy that I sold it at a 3.3 ETH floor when it pumped because it's now well below one ETH. I think there's definitely hope. He's got a ton of funding, like a ton of guys got to be close to a hundred million dollars net worth. He owns like 103 board apes still had a ton of ape coin. He's, he's got to be pushing a hundred million dollar valuation on his net worth, has money to work with. For that reason, there's definitely hope. Jungle Freaks, a lot of hype. Haven't heard much recently. Not going to make it. Kaiju Kings. Great development team, been around for a while, strong community, always talks highly of it, always mentioned in the top collections discussions that I've heard. This is a solid project. I'm gonna say this one's going to make it actually. I think this is a leg above some of these other ones. There might be some complaints with this one. People might call me crazy for putting Kaiju Kings above things like Azuki or Invisible Friends maybe, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about that placement. Karafuru. I love the idea. I love toys. Strong team. Professional branding in my eyes. I would say it's a solid project, but I just don't think it's on this level. Um, I, I do want to say that it's somewhere in par with Goblin Town, which is making me really want to put Goblin Town down here as well. But I'm going to leave it for now. Killer Girlfriends. Now, this one's a product that I literally hadn't heard of much at all. It was surprisingly... 21,000 Ethereum in trading volume, which is a ton. Truthfully, I don't care. It's probably going to be in the 98%. Lazy Lions, been around for a while, still around, still hear about it here and there. I know the name, people know the name. Uh, sorry, probably not going to make it in my eyes. Lil Heroes, I'm going to say it's not going to make it. I'm sorry. Lou, this one feels like something that only survived in early days when people were going nuts for no reason. Loot's not going to make it. Call me crazy. Mutant Ape Yacht Club, it's going to make it. It's definitely going to make it. It's going to ride with Board Ape Yacht Club. We've seen a enough trajectory, enough history with it to know that it's going to ride the waves with Board Ape and Yuga. Me bits. There's a lot of me that wants to say it's a blue chip because it has through the test of time. Given the fact that it's not one of the collections you see frequently in profile pictures, you don't see people talking about it a lot. The metaverse is still far ways off. It's not a blue chip quite yet in my eyes. It's going to make it. It's going to ride with the rest of them, especially now that Yuga owns me bits. Uh, I just think it's not quite on the level of a CryptoPunks or a Board Ape. Mechaverse started out looking like it could be the biggest product of all time. And then it just kept falling. MFers. This one's very similar to Cryptodes in my eyes. It's community based. It's got a strong community. It's held a good floor for a long time. I love the simplicity and the meme culture behind it. Meme culture, never underestimate it. There's definitely hope here, but uh, Sartoshi leaving, you need to have at least one leader leading the pack. Too many cooks in the kitchen is always an issue. Artifacts, Monolith. I really like this project. I want to buy one. I've been waiting for a good buy in price. I think there's a lot of potential here. Nike has the world at their fingertips. Let's see what they do. It's a solid project that has a potential to become a blue chip alongside the Clone X. But for right now, it's definitely solid. It's held its own for a while. Let's see where this goes. Moonbirds, this is tough. There's a lot of me that wants to say blue chip. You look at the price action on this one. You look at the, the floor dips and they bounce right back up like no tomorrow. Founders, the legitimacy, the history, the experience of the founding team really makes me feel confident in this product over almost anything else that's this young. Because remember, this is a new project, right? It's hard for me to put it at blue chip quite yet because time is one of the most important factors in my eyes. You can't say something's a blue chip if it's only been around for six months. You just can't do that. It's way too short of a time span to understand if a project can 
take bullets, battle through FUD, go through bear markets. You just don't know yet. And for that reason, it's we're going to make it, but obviously it has the full potential upside of it being a blue chip. With that being said, I have to put Proof Collective right next to it. Even though the floor price is a lot higher, the scarcity is a lot higher. This is another one that's borderline blue chip. It just needs to stand the test of time. Next up, we got Mooncats and... Believe it or not, Mooncats has been around since 2017. Very hard to place this one in my eyes because it's certainly not a product that I'm looking to buy or people talk about frequently, but it has a historical value there. I'm going to say because it's still got a decent floor price, it's 0.4 right now, I think somewhere around there. I want to say it's solid. It's hard for me to justify it against these much newer projects because there's different reasons for why I'm putting it here. But I think it has to be put in solid because of the fact that it's been around for four years. Almost all these products are going to be either made it or completely dead. Like there's not going to be this huge middle chunk section. It's one or the other. It's hard to know because they're so early, but this one's actually stood the test of four years. So for that reason, you got to think it's at least solid. Murakami flowers, Murakami flower seed. This one's been up and down. Uh, the artist obviously has huge relevance. You know what? I think I, I think I'm going to put it solid with the fact that it, it, it could go either way. I really think it could go either way. I'm not sold. This is a product that's like a must buy. Some people are going to hate me for saying that, but that's genuinely how I feel about it. To be honest with you, I don't remember what this product is. It's a top 125 in terms of all-time volume, but because I don't even know what it is, I'm going to say it's not going to make it. <laughs> it might be really bad logic because it might be worth something. The chances are, if I don't even know what it is by their logo, that's not a good sign. My Curio Cards, another historically relevant project that was supposed to be amazing and just quite didn't make it. I'm going to say that there's hope because of the name, because of the historical relevance, because of the people that bought it early on that understand what it is. My Pet Hooligan, I think this is a solid project. I think it's underestimated. I think it's got a chance to really make a name for itself in the play to earn and gaming space because they have a legitimate studio backing it. They also have the technology with a mobile phone that it can be applied to any collection. They are broadening their scopes outside of just being an NFT or play to earn game. And I think there's a lot of potential there with a team that can back it up. Neo Tokyo, tough to say. You got Alex Becker behind this product. It seems like it's fallen off a cliff. There's been direction, then misdirection. Now it seems like they're trying to find direction again. I don't know if Alex cares enough about this project or seemingly cares enough about this product to see it succeed super, super well like it could. And the fact that Elio Trades now has his own project that's not as involved in Neo Tokyo or involved at all to my knowledge, I'm going to say that there's still hope. There's definitely way more upside to this project than there is downside in my eyes. But at the moment, I'm not feeling super hot about where it's at. NFT Worlds, another product that I think really could do well. It's super smart to integrate it to Minecraft, a game that people already play. I'm curious how it'll stand the test of time against other metaverses. For now, I think it's solid, but there's definitely a lot more downside than there is upside in my opinion. OK Bears, I think there's some potential here, but I really feel like there's more downside than there is upside. I think you've already seen the peak of OK Bears. You heard it here first. I would be shocked if it ever surpasses their all-time high. V friend. I think Gary V is one of the most influential people, one of the most smart and ahead of the curve people that there is in this space. I think this is a solid project. In fact, I'm going to say this one's going to make it. V friends too. I don't love how large the collection was, but I think Gary has a lot of great ideas. He's got a ton of funding, has every reason that it should make it. Other deeds by Yuga Lab. I think the 100,000 collection size and 200,000 collection size is going to be a real test of how many people are here and willing to buy this. I think it's solid with the potential to be much greater if this is the metaverse people start playing with. Just today, they had the load bearing test that went pretty well. I was impressed with how it went. Phantom Bear, pumped by an influencer, peak bull market. Not sure it's going to make it. I'm going to say it's not going to make it. Pixelmon, absolute joke. $70 million raised. This has been taken over by investors that are way more knowledgeable. Was taken out of the hands of the 17-year-old founder. Believe it or not, I think this product actually has some potential. There's obvious issues with Pokemon in my eyes, but I'm sure that the people that are taking it over actually have considered that because they know what the hell they're doing. I think there's definitely hope here. Obviously, the odds are against them, given the fact that it's been a colossal failure, a massive joke in the space so far. But the truth is, it still has a 0.2 to 0.3 ETH floor. And with the new ownership, there is a potential that this thing does well in the future. This is Primate Planet. Let's be honest here. Not going to make it. Psychedelics Anonymous. Great things I hear from this product. Great things. It's held a steady 1.5 to 2.5 ETH floor for a while. This guy knows what he's doing. For that reason, I got to put it in solid. I've wanted to pick one of these up for a while. I'm waiting for a great buy-in price. Pudgy Penguins. Been around for a while. There's still hope. Product PXN. Another one that feels like a mechaverse, 
but in a worse market. I personally think there's there's definitely hope. I mean, they, they raised a ton of money. They obviously pulled off an amazing feat, a huge hype cycle. I think they're in the same boat as Hape right here. They should go side by side because they are very similar in my eyes. I put them in not going to make it, but truthfully, no, I'm wrong. They're not going to make it, but they are very similar. These three right here feel like the same project. A lot of hype, had a great launch, raised a ton of money, but not really sure where they're going to go. Next up, I believe this is Ragnarok. Robotos, Honestly, don't think they're going to make it. Rumble Kong League. This one's another play to earn type staking uh, NFT that came out a while ago. I think there's definitely hope here. They've stood the test of time. Sandbox Land. I'm a little concerned because I don't know which metaverse is going to make it. I would say at the moment, in terms of notoriety, Sandbox is definitely one of the top ones. This one could be one of those products like an AOL that was really, really strong early on. Looked like the leader, looked like the forefront, looked like what everyone was going to be using for a long time to come. And the next thing you know, AOL is dead in the dirt. No one's using it. No one cares. That could be Sandbox. Sandbox. That's why I'm hesitant. I think you could argue it's definitely solid. And right now it is really solid. It's been, you know, a one parcel of land is worth one ETH or more always for the last God knows how long. It's more risky than people might admit to. Sneaky Vampire Syndicate's been around for a while. It's held a decent floor. I personally just don't think it's got enough juice left in the tank to make it. I'm sorry, not going to make it. Subducks. I, I want to say there's hope, but my gut says that it's not going to make it. I believe this is Vox, Vox Collectibles. Again, this is another product I just don't know enough about. I want to say it's solid because of where it's been and the floor price that it's held for a long time. It's currently around a 0.6 ETH floor. I just mm, don't know if I should put this in solid or hope. I, there's arguments for, for it being good and there's arguments against it. I'm going to put it in solid for now just because it's been around for quite a while. Down to our final three. We have Wolf Game. Honestly, this is another product that set a really great precedent. It started a whole PTE different type of GameFi situation with NFTs, which will always be recognized as a pioneer, I guess you could say, in this space. But unfortunately, pioneers don't always live to be the strongest. There's going to be better products that come out that put this one in the dust eventually. I just don't think it's going to make it. World Wide Web is another one that's like, man, it's done well. It's done good things. I could see it succeeding. I don't know if I really feel like it's strong enough to make a long-term play on. There's definitely hope. There's definitely upside, but I can equally see it falling to the dust and becoming just another one of those projects. And last, but certainly not least, we have World of Women. I, I really think is going to make it. I do think this one's on the level of a wag me because of the relevance to, like I said before, with Boss Beauties, the female-centric, female-led projects, I think what this one stands for, even though the floor price, like Cool Cats, has come down quite a bit, I think long-term, the historic value here and um, the relevance of this project early on is going to make it be a product that has a ton of upside potential. I think a lot of people are going to be mad at me for having World of Women above Azuki, and a Azuki next to my pet hooligan and so on and so forth. I do think looking at this again, I think Azuki actually should be and we're going to make it. I think they've gotten far past enough the FUD. It's not going to die. It, that's not going to kill them. It certainly really, really impacted them. Going from 30 ETH floor to a 10 ETH floor is not a joke. Like that's a huge, huge, huge drop. And you haven't seen other blue chips like Moonbirds or Bored Ape or anything else have that kind of impact from, from a news catalyst. But at the same time, I do think it's on par with a lot of these other projects right now, at least. And I do think it has potential to be one of those big brands. I just don't know if these other Web2 brands or other partners are going to be super hot on the fact that their founder did rug other projects. Obviously, you can have your opinion on what you think about that, but you have to think about the big picture, the big players, the big money, and where these things can go long term as brands looking at the rest of these here i feel pretty confident in them i would say the rest of these look about right to me i definitely see some arguments for maybe adidas being higher but personally i just don't see it yet i would say about 90 percent of the products below this line right here very likely not going to make it long term or at least not have a strong enough floor price or market relevance to be worthwhile or considered made it. Some people might be like, you are crazy to only have two in the top tier. But the truth is, like I said, time matters. I want to see all these projects stand the test of time at least one full year or a go to scale strategy that the brand can clearly pave to show me that it's going to be a big deal in the future. I don't know if I see that enough from any of these yet. 
it's just too early. Most of them because they're not old enough yet. And so for those reasons, I have a hard time putting them in a blue chip status. Drop me a comment down below, destroy my chart, tell me how wrong I am, tweet me at, M tweet me at Matt Cabuzio and hate on me even more. We'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.